Hello! In this video, we will be demonstrating how to make beaded mask leashes that can be converted into necklaces. This is Janet Palumbo with Reem Iverson. We are two beads or better than one. Here's something everybody needs. So there's my mask and check out my beautiful mask leash. And when I take it off, I don't have to put it down. I don't have to leave it in the car. I don't have to have it sitting someplace dirty. It's around my neck and it looks good. So we're gonna show you how to make a mask leash. As a matter of fact, we're going to show you how to make all different kinds of mask leashes. <laughs> so that, let me say that we're going to show you a lot of different options. We're not going to give you a pattern because there are a million ways to make one of these from the simplest stringing to the most complicated beadwork you want to try. We're going to show you um, some options, two different options for attaching something that can then attach to your mask. And, um, and we are gonna demo this, this particular stitch and a really beautiful one that Reem is working on. And we're gonna just show you some other chains that are options that you could use. I mean, the easiest thing to do is to put a lobster clasp at each end. And these are large. These are much larger than we usually use for jewelry. This is, a, this is about a 15 millimeter lobster clasp. So you want a lobster clasp that's, you know, an inch long or thereabouts. Even bigger is fine. If you put two lobster clasps on, you could make it, you could wear it as a necklace. So you can use it as a leash whenever you need it as a leash. And then you can either hook the two lobster clasps together and now you have a necklace. Or if the day ever comes when we don't need the masks anymore, you can take one of the lobster clasps off and then leave one on and then you just hook it to the jump ring and there's your necklace. So what we're gonna show you is a convertible leash. <laughs> it can convert from a leash to a necklace. But the length for the leash, um, somewhere around 24 inches is what you want. So somewhere between 22 and 24 inches. And when you're done, you'll have something that can be used as a leash and can also be a 24 inch necklace. I wanted to show you, this is a very simple, simple, simple uh, chain, but it has some pizzazz because it, it spirals on its own. Let me show you first what it looks like. It looks like this and it has a lobster clasp at the end. I've attached it to one end. I have not completed my project, but I will show you how it works. And I'm using two different sizes of beads. Size eight is my A bead, and size six is my B bead. So in this case, what causes the spiraling is the really what it is, it's because it's two different sizes. For this project, what the first thing you're going to need to do is pick up an A bead, which is size eight, and a B bead, which is size six. And what you're going to do is you're going to do a ladder stitch. So here I am, of course, I'm left handed. So I, my working, my dominant hand is my left hand, but it doesn't matter. All you have to do is pick up an eight first and then a six, go through the eight again. Go, hook, now they're gonna sit next to each other. 
I like to do it again. I like to pass through it again because I like to reinforce it. That first one needs a little bit of reinforcement to make it sturdy. And this is my chance now to pick up an eight, which I will later use to, to put my jump ring. You don't have to do that. You can also do that at the end, but maybe this is a good time to do it. And uh, let, me, let me put this down for a second and show you why I put that eight there. You see how I hooked my lobster clasp? on a jump ring. So I pass this jump ring through the size eight bead, and then I attach the lobster clasp. So now you've seen this, it was very easy. And what I'm gonna do next is even easier. So I'm going to pick up another eight. So I'm coming out of an eight. You see here, I'm coming out of an A. So I'm gonna pick up an A. And then I'm gonna pick up its mate the B, but here's what's gonna happen now. I'm going to go, there's a bridge here. There's a bridge between the two beads, a thread bridge. So I'm gonna go through that. Okay, so I, went under that bridge and then I go back through the eight again. And you want to make your stitch very tight. If you're not tight, it won't spiral as nicely. It will still spiral, but you need to keep an even tension and make it very tight every time. So again, let me repeat, from, from here on, I'm gonna do the same thing over and over again. So I'm gonna pick up an A, which is size eight, and then a B. I'm going to go in between the beads, there's a thread bridge. I'm gonna go through that. Uh, adjust the beads and then go up here. This is like a step up, basically. I'm stepping up every time I do this. And then you see how I pull it really tight? So again, I picked up an A and a B, and I'm gonna go under the bridge and up and step up the B, the A, B. That's it. And believe it or not, after just a few more stitches, it will start spiraling. And I tried it with other sizes. I tried it with six and eight, with 11 and eight. And I must say, I did not like the effect. Uh, maybe you will have better luck with that, with changing the sizes. But I found that size eight and size six work nicely. And it creates a chain that is, you know, nice enough to be visible and have, you know, that look that you want for your leash. So. After many experiments, these two sizes were ideal. Also using contrasting colors or one, you know, like something either the core is darker or the outside bead is darker and so on. So because you, if you put, the, if they're too close to each other, you want to appreciate this effect. A completed one with a lobster clasp. And then you can look so elegant when you wear your mask can convert this to a necklace. That's why we were using these pretty clasps because we wanted you to have the option of converting this to a necklace when uh, you're not wearing your mask. All right, thank you. So I'm gonna show you another way to attach the lobster clasp. So Reen showed you a very good way where you run the jump ring through the size eight bead that's at the end of your beadwork. And another way of doing it is just to put the lobster clasp, the jump ring through a ring of 
seed beads. So here's a ring of eight seed beads and the lobster clasp and the jump ring attached to it are just through there. So let me show you how to do this stitch and this way of attaching a clasp. And with both of these, you can um, do the beadwork first and then attach your jump ring later. Um, with this one, you can also, if you have your jump ring and your lobster clasp already, you can, you can sew it right into the beadwork from the beginning. First, let me show you a jump ring and a lobster clasp. And I just want to remind everybody when you're opening a jump ring, there's a right way and a wrong way. So I'm using two jeweler's pliers. I'm putting one on either side of the opening and I'm leaving my left hand steady and I'm pulling my, the one in my right hand towards me. There, that's what you need to see. You never want to open a jump ring by pulling the ends away from each other because you'll never get it back into a circle again. But if you pull the ends into a different plane, you see how this one's now in front and that one's now in back, then you can get it back into a circle. So you put the put your lobster clasp on there. And then again, I'm going to hold one end with one plier and one end with the other plier. And I'm going to just push this one back into place until they meet up. It's all together again. So that's how you work with a jump ring. So let me show you how to do this pattern. It's not hard. I've got thread on my needle and I'm going to make a ring. I'm going to start with the ring that is around the jump ring. And I, I put eight beads in the ring. You could six or eight, whatever. I'm going to use eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And these are size 11 seed beads. The purple ones are size 11. Let me move this so it's better. Okay, so there's eight. And then I'm also going to put my jump ring on there. And I'm going to go through all eight again. Uh, I'm just putting a, I'm leaving a very short tail, only, you know, like four inches, just enough that I can weave it in later. I'm not going to do anything further with the tail. And my leash used about nine feet of thread. So I would start with a five foot length. And when it gets too short, add another four or five foot length. And that, that should do it. On the tail, I'm just going to put one of the size eight beads. I'm going to put a size eight there. I put it on the tail thread, and now I'm going to go through it with the working thread. And I think you'll see. So that's a nice beginning. Let me show that. And in fact, what I can do now is just tie a knot here, because I'm not going to go through this again. I'm just tying a square knot between the tail and the working thread. Okay, so let me put that down so you can see it. There's my lobster class, my six millimeter jump ring. I have a loop of eight seed beads going through the lot, through the jump ring, and then one size eight bead. 
Now I'm ready to do my pattern. So for my pattern, I'm going to pick up 10 size 11 seed beads. And then I'm going to do this pattern with the size 8 beads. And it's a right angle weave stitch. And then I'm going to pick up 10 11s. And then I'm going to make this whole diamond section. The other side, the other loop of 10 size 11 beads gets added on the return trip. So pick up 10 size 11 beads. Bring those down. Then I'm going to pick up eight size eight beads. Eight size eight beads. I'm going to pass through the first one, the first of the size eight again to make a ring. Then I'm going to pass through one size eight bead. I'm going to skip the next one and pass through the next two. When I pull that tight, the bead that I skipped sticks out to make the little diamond shape. And as you make this pattern, you're going to, on the first pass, make one diamond shape on one side. And we'll do that one on the return trip too, all right? So there's the first diamond. I'm going to use this bead that I'm now, that my thread is now exiting as a common bead for the right angle weave. So whereas the first circle I picked up eight, I'm now going to pick up seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to pass through the bead my thread is exiting. That is number eight. Then I flip the work over so that I'm got it facing in the right direction. I pass through the next bead. I skip one bead and I pass through the next two. And I pull that very tight. And now you see I have that bead sticking out. It makes a diamond. And then the last, the next one is just the same. Pick up seven. seven. Pass through the bead. The thread is exiting. Flip it over. Pass through one bead. Skip one bead and pass through the next two and pull it tight. Sometimes you have to pinch that bead to get it on the outside of the thread to make that little diamond shape. So there's my diamond. And this one is, we'll get this on the return trip, that one on the return trip as well. So I have my three diamonds and now I just string 10 more size 11. 10. And now we're ready to make the three diamonds again. And um, another thing, I'm, I made this one using size 11 and size 8. But you could, of course, use all size 11 or all size 8. Uh, it would look very nice no matter how you do it, I think. So I'm ready for the first diamond unit. I'm going to pick up 
eight size eight beads. There's eight. I drop them down. And then I pass through the first of those size eight beads again to make a ring. And I pull that tight down to the beadwork. Then I pass through one bead, I skip a bead, and I pass through two beads. And when I pull that tight, it makes a little diamond. For my second unit, I only need seven of the size eight beads. One, two, seven, because this bead that my thread is exiting is in, I'm going to use it in common. So I pass through the bead the thread is exiting. Now I have a second ring. I pass through one bead. I skip the next one. I pass through two more. I pull it tight and there's the diamond. The next unit is seven size eight beads. I pass through the bead the thread is exiting. Flip it over. I pass through one bead. I skip one bead and I pass through two. And then I pick up 10 size 11. Now, let's pretend that that's as long as I want it to be. Let's pretend I've done all of these. And I'll show you what to do on the second pass. So first of all, I need to make another loop to attach my other lobster class because we're going to put one at each end. Right now, I'm just going to make the loop because some of you might not have your lobster clasp yet. So I'll show you how you can do that. So I'm just going to pick up one size eight bead. That's going to be at the bottom of my loop, just like this one here at the beginning. And then I'm going to pick up eight seed beads. Then I'm going to pass through the eight size 11 beads again. To make that loop. And I might even pass through them a third time because once we leave this spot, we're never coming back again with thread. And this is where the lobster clasp is going to be attached. And so we want to make it secure. So I've gone through it a third time. Now I can pass back through the size eight bead. And that centers the loop. above the size eight bead. All right, now I'm ready to add the beads that are missing. So I have 10 here, I'm gonna pick up 10. Now, when I look at the size eight that the other beads are coming out of, I see that they're coming out of one side of that size eight bead. So I'm going to enter the other side. And now there are size 11 seed beads on either side of that size eight. And I'm in the perfect place to now tighten up and make a diamond on the side that doesn't 
have a diamond shape yet. So I'm going to go through one seed bead, one of the eights, skip the next one, and pass through two, just like we did on the other side. But now you're doing it to the other side. So now both sides of that diamond are tight and have a little bead sticking out. In the next unit, I already did that to this side, but my thread is already perfectly positioned to do it to this side. So I'm going to pass through one seed bead, skip the next one, and pass through two, just like we did on the other side. And you see that time the thread ended up on the outside of the bead, but I just have to pull the bead into position so that it's on the other side of the thread and pull tight. And now I have a diamond. So sometimes you have to manipulate the beads to get them into the shape you want. So I'm going to complete it by passing through one, skip one, and pass through two. And when I pull that tight, make sure that that middle bead is on the outside of the thread. There. Now I have my three diamonds. And I'm coming out of the other side of the size 8 bead from where the first set of size 11 beads are. So I pick up 10. 10 size 11 beads, and I pass into that size 8 bead at the top of the next unit. And I'm always going to pass through it so that there are, there's an arc of beads coming out of one side and the new arc coming out of the other side. Then I pass through one, skip one, and pass through two. Pass through one, skip one, and pass through two. Pass through one, skip one, and pass through two. And again, this time I have to manipulate the bead to get it on the outside of the thread. There. There's, so you see on the return pass, you add the other arc of size 11 beads, and you manipulate the other side of each of those diamonds. And then I pick up 10 more. And I pass through that first size eight bead. And then I could pass through the ring of seed beads that's around the lobster clasp, around the jump ring. So I'm going to pass through that all eight of those again, and then back through the eight. Now my working thread and my tail thread are in the same place, and I could just tie them in a knot to secure the thread, and I'm done. And then <clears throat> this loop, whenever I get my jump ring and my lobster clasp, I can then put them on. So again, uh, I would pick up my jump ring, pull one side toward me so that it opens up. And then uh, if I, I could put that through my loop of seed beads, 
and then put another lobster clasp on and close it up. Because this pattern, you could also do it with an eight on the end, the way Reem did hers, and, and then run the jump ring through the eight. And let me show you how that works. So if you're going to use the eight to attach the jump ring, instead of going back through it, you want to go through it again in the same direction. So the, the whole of the bead is now oriented in that way. Let's pretend that that's the start of my pattern. And I've made the whole chain, and now I'm ready to attach my jump ring. Let me show you how you do that. So I've opened up the jump ring. I've got my size eight that's on the very end of my beadwork. Imagine there's a whole long chain underneath it. I just, holding it with my pliers, I can pass the jump ring through the size eight bead, see? And then I just put the lobster clasp on it and close it up. And there you go. And that's a very good connection too. That's really sturdy. And it's nice because you can roll the seam of the jump ring inside the, the bead and then you'll never see that seam. You can do either pattern either way. You can do this pattern starting with the size eight. So pretend that here I, instead of making this loop, I just started with the size eight and then picked up 10 and did my diamonds, picked up 10, did my diamonds, came back the other way and ended by going through that size eight again and then putting the clasp on that way. So you could do the attachment either way with almost any pattern. I thought if anybody has super duos left over, um, you might want to use them. And I just came up with three or four different ways you could use them. Here's one way. And you see, I just now, I just mm -hmm. alternated. What I did was I picked up five seed beads and a super duo, five seed beads and a super duo five seed beads and a super duo. And I alternated the colors of the super duos. And I made that, and let's pretend I made that as long as I wanted. And I attached a ring of beads at the other end for the lobster clasp. And then I came back down the other side, going through the other hole on the super duo, five beads, go through the other hole, pick up five beads, go through the other hole. So I think that's, pretty clear to figure out. Then I thought, well, what if I wanted to make it a little fancier? So I added, so I embellished it. And the way I embellished it was after doing this pattern, I went back another time. And this time what I did was that I passed through the super duo. I passed through two seed beads and then I picked up a white one and I skipped that middle one and passed through the next two seed beads, the super duo and the next two seed beads. And then I picked up a white one, skipped the middle black one and went through two seed beads, a super duo, two seed beads. And it's basically you're, when you put this white one on the outside, it pushes the black ones to the inside. And it makes a pretty pattern. So that's a, just another easy chain that you could make. Um, 
And this one, if you had the seed bead, the, if you had the super duos left and you didn't have quite as many seed beads in one color, I don't see any reason why you couldn't just use all sorts of different colors in your seed beads. So you could just make a bead soup by taking all your size 11 seed beads and putting them all out on your tray <clears throat> and just picking them up in a random pattern. Or you could have use as many of the same color as you can until you run out and then change to another color until you run out of that one and then change to another color. There are a lot of different ways you could work with color and improvise an interesting chain. I wanted to show you something that's an old favorite of ours. We, we made these uh, this bracelet many, many years ago. And this is called a spiral rope. And we actually offer this now as a free pattern. We have the pattern for this free bracelet. So you can make it into a bracelet, but you can of course make it long enough to become a leash. I wanted to share this with you. This one uses size eight beads in the core. And then it uses size 11 on the outside. You see there are like spirals outside that decorate the core. And these are sizes 11 and six. And you could use our free spiral rope pattern to make a long leash for your mask. And then you can convert it into a necklace. So these are some ideas. We hope you enjoy them. Thanks for watching.